Hey there guys, good afternoon. How is everybody on this lovely, lovely Sunday afternoon? I hope all is well with everyone. We are going to have a Truth Talks conversation about adults behaving badly. Adults behaving badly. Huh. Such a disappointment when that happens. But in some instances, what's to be expected? Um, we just don't want to always um, acknowledge that that possibility was there all along. So, hey, Melissa, what's going on, Miles? Um, thanks for joining in, you guys. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing the video out, we're going to talk about adults behaving badly today. And I know that we've all had these experiences where either we behaved in a way that was somewhat questionable um, or we've certainly been around people who were behaving in a way where you're just like seriously why are you acting like that and so that's the conversation I want to have today on truth talk so as you guys come in welcome to the ultimate power team my name is Marcy Batiste your ultimate power coach America's number one reality based success and recovery trainer I'm so glad you're here um, you know, one of the, the, the principles that Ultimate Power Coaching was built on is one that says that your personal foundation supports your professional position. And what I mean by that is that how and what we have in order or out of order uh, personally is going to affect how we operate professionally and what how we show up to the world and so certainly our behavior is very representative or representative of what's in order and what's out of order and a lot of times we can put on you know we can get the hair done we can get the nails done put on the fancy clothes but still behave in a way that's completely out of order even though we appear to be completely in order uh, and so it's not about what we see and what we what we what we look like and it's not about how much money we have it's truly about what's in here it's about the content of your character and I know y'all heard that from Dr. Martin Luther King talking about the content of your character and unfortunately a lot of times People will use external factors to justify their own bad behavior. And I was talking with, um, this couple incidents had happened recently where people were sharing some things with me about uh, mutual acquaintances. And, you know, there, you know, the common thread is, why would anybody do that? Like, why would you act that way? And then I hear people say, to justify their own behavior. Oh, well, they did X, Y, and Z, and they just completely took me out of my character. No, boo-boo. And nobody took you out of your character. You chose to step outside your character. You chose the behavior. You chose to act that way. You chose to show up that in the, to, to the world that way. You show, chose to show up to that person that way. Um, but it's always an internal choice to behave well or to behave badly. And... Um, sometimes we think that what someone else does somehow absolves of us of our own responsibility to behave in an adult fashion and I think there's a, like a saying when I was a child I behaved in childish ways and as now I'm no longer a child I put away I don't know how it goes but you get the point when you was a little kid you did kiddish things and you acted kiddish ways and you responded in kiddish manners and now that you're an adult, the expectation should be that you stop behaving in kiddish ways because you're no longer a child. And unfortunately, um, you don't age out of immaturity. You mature into adulthood. And some people think that you're going to age out of immaturity. And that's not, it's not the case because there's a whole lot of old people acting like immature little children like they've never had 
any home training, like they've never had any education, like they've never had any ability to contain themselves. And so these situations that came up, again, like I said, you know, the, on the one hand, you got the person who's justifying their bad behavior based on what somebody else did and saying, oh, they took me out of my character. No, boo-boo, you jumped up out your character. You chose to behave the way you chose to behave. And then you have the person where you're looking at, like, why would they do that? Why would they act that way? And so this is how I handle adults behaving badly. And hopefully this will help you guys as you are faced with, hey, Gregory, what's up, T? Um, as you guys are faced with adults who behave badly is to not question the behavior don't question the behavior because that's not where the issue lies I question beyond the behavior I'm gonna question your judgment because you see the behavior is symptomatic but the judgment is where the core is like how do you process information how do you determine right from wrong what what building blocks what personal foundation do you have that says that this is the appropriate course of action because that's where we need to get to we need to get to your decision making abilities because there is not one thing that someone else should be able to do to you or say to you that's going to take you out of character you have to understand that sometimes now you might still make a choice to step outside because you want to prove a certain kind of point or you want to prove a certain kind of message. But the judgment factor comes in because you have to be able to have the forethought to say, after I behave this way, after I choose to make this step and step outside my character, and if I choose to, to behave badly in private or in public, what are the repercussions? Because there will be some. You don't get to just go out here and behave any kind of way and treat people and mistreat people any kind of way because of anything that was done to you like it just doesn't work that way and so I'm not questioning and I'm not even so much looking at the behaviors but I'm looking at your character and I'm looking at your ability to have and process with good judgment that's the like the that's a bigger concern to me because if you have no better judgment than to think that you can just lash out at people or you can treat people badly and that there's not supposed to be any kind of repercussions back to you, that's a bigger problem. Because now you, what you're telling me is that you don't have the ability of forethought. You don't have the ability to forecast out and say, okay, let's see, if I, if I do this, this, or this, these are the possible repercussions and I remember as a little kid I've always been this like that's how I process information since I was little true story can't make this up so my mom always used to tell me that I was so hard to discipline and like I wasn't a troublesome kid like I didn't get into a lot of trouble but I would be very calculated <laughs> and so it would make it difficult for her to find fitting punishments because I would use my power of forethought to say okay if I do this then my consequences are likely to be this 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 or this based on what I know of my mom and how she disciplines and how she hands down punishments what I knew of my stepfather based on how he disciplines and how he I knew all that and I would take all of those things into consideration and if it was something that I truly wanted to do I would do it anyway and accept my consequences and so I remember like at first I didn't get it like I had to be a little bit older I was in my late teens before I really understood what she meant because what she would do would be I would have some sort of infraction say out past curfew let's say and um, you know a normal <laughs> punishment might be you can't go to the football game on Friday mine would be like you can't go to the football game for six months what the hell because it was like she felt like and my stepfather felt like they needed to push beyond to send me a message because clearly I already knew okay if I miss curfew tonight I'm probably not gonna be able to go to the football game on Friday and if 
whatever I wanted to do on this day was more important to me than what I, going to the football game on Friday, I would do what I was going to do. And I would accept my consequences. And so that type of that type of judgment and forethought and calculation is a is part of me. Like it's part of my soul, it's part of my spirit and that is a blessing and it's a curse because I would never be able to say that I didn't understand, I didn't know, I didn't realize, I just came out of character because I don't operate that way. I'm always going to think things through. I'm always going to think about the possible repercussions. I'm always going to think about what could happen. What's worst case, what's worst case scenario. And if whatever the hell I want to do is more important to me than the consequences of worst case scenario, I'm probably going to go ahead and do it and accept the consequences as they come. But I'm not ever going to blame somebody else for that. You didn't force me to do it. I made an informed choice to do what I was going to do. What would you say, Melissa? No, I wasn't a bad girl, Melissa. No, I wasn't. I totally wasn't. Like, seriously? Um, I can count probably... No lie. I can probably count on my fingers the number of times my mom really had... Actually, probably on one hand. The number of times where she really had any, like, problems, per se, out of me as a teenager... Um, like I, like I was a senior before I ever skipped school and I got caught the very first time I did it. But again, that's a, like that, that, that was a perfect example where I'm like, I wanted to go hang out with my friends and not go to school and go, go to the pool and tan and drink wine coolers and so I wrote, this is what I did. So I write a note to the school that says um, that my, that I, I, I had to be with my grandmother or whatever, that she was in the hospital. And so I signed my mom's name to this note and I go off with my homegirls and I skip school and I get home and um, my mom says to me, now, she didn't call me all day, nothing like, as a matter of fact, what did we even, I don't even think we had cell phones then. But anyway, so she waits till I get home, right? I walk in the door, and it's probably, by that point, maybe about 6 or 7 o'clock. Like I said, I was a senior, so had my own car, had, had some latitude, had some flexibility. And uh, so I walk into the house, and my mom's sitting there, and she was like, how's grandma doing? And I'm like, shit. Like, I knew right that moment, right that moment, I knew I was busted. I knew I was busted. And I couldn't even be, like, I can't be mad about it. I can't be nothing. Because I knew when I wrote the note that there was a possibility of getting caught for, for skipping school. Now, how many of y'all have skipped school before and have never been caught? But no, that's not my life. So, like honesty like I always get caught when I do something wrong so if I if I'm telling lies I get caught up in the lies the whole thing so I just really try and just stick to truth truth talks <laughs> reality based is bred into me and so um you know at that point my mom says to me why didn't you just tell me you wanted the day off of school I would have wrote the note for you but instead I get a call from the school telling me that you are going to see your sick grandmother now mind you my grandmother had already passed away by that time so imagine my surprise she's like why didn't you just ask now that that never occurred to me that never in a million years occurred to me that if I was just honest and said, hey, mom, the girls are going to the pool today. I don't feel like going to class. Hell, it was my senior year. I already had all my credits to graduate. There was no reason for me to skip school. It's just that's what I wanted to do. 
busted, disgusting, can't be trusted. Shut up, Gregory. That was like the only thing. Yeah, Melissa, detention. Like, that's it. I get caught all the time. And so, again, this is something that's in my core. Like, I've been this way since I was little. That that fa that forethought and, and, and using judgment and thinking about the repercussions. And so, when I see people behaving badly, I'm not questioning the behavior. The behavior is not the problem. It's your in inability to exercise good judgment or you've taken the step thought it through and still thought that this was a good idea in which case now I'm like okay now we we need to talk about what what your values look like and your 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 good versus evil and your your bad versus good and so forth but that's the thing you guys don't get caught up and don't think that there is some sort of past for bad behavior. You don't get to say as an adult, um, they 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 made me do it. They they did this so I did that. They did this so I responded this way. Um there have been so many times where I have had people be ha behave badly to me. Um I've had them do things to me. I've had them say things about me. I've had and this is what I know to be true. It hurts them more for me to stay in character and exercise good judgment than it ever would for me to come unglued. There's nothing that I can say to that person because that, that's going to really affect them because to use bad, bad behavior against me or towards me, you, you don't care for me anyway. So how I feel is irrelevant but what you want to know the person behaving badly what you want to know is can I get to you can I get a rise out of you can I piss you off can I push your buttons can I do this can I do that and I'll be damned if you're gonna get that level of satisfaction from me like not gonna happen and not gonna happen because you're not ever going to be able to go back and say, oh, Marcy, Marcy this or Marcy that, Marcy this or Marcy that. Your tactics aren't going to work here because I've already thought it through and I understand that for you to behave in a derogatory, negative, hurtful, harmful way to me that you don't care about me and therefore if you don't care about me, how I feel doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. This is a tactic. It's a ploy and you will not win. That's exercising judgment. That's exercising the power of choice to stay within your character and be the person you say you are in spite of how somebody else is acting, in spite of somebody else's bad behavior. You know, people talk about, um, you know, blocking people on social media and stuff like that. I don't even do that. You can have full access to me and I still will not respond. And if I, I mean, there'll be a whole other long video if I gave y'all a bunch of examples of ways and times where everything in your body wants me to just have that petty moment, be that vindictive person that they're that they're prompting and pushing and prodding for me to be. But I understand that you don't care for me. Anyway, so how I feel is irrelevant. So why show you emotion? I would rather simply dismiss you and be done versus dragging out my frustration some on some sort of vendetta and all this other stuff. Like there's just so much more constructive ways to deal with other people's bad behavior than sinking to their to their level what what was what's Michelle Obama say when they go low we go high it ain't even about going high it's about staying there staying there so high is your standard high is your position it's not a question of when they go low we go high because we stay high we stay high and it's about their judgment their choices and they have every right to make them they have every right to make them but I also have the right to choose not to associate with the, that person that individual 
that situation, that circumstance, that place. If I know in all likelihood bad things are going to happen at a certain place and I go to that certain place and bad things happen, whose fault is that? That's my fault because I made a choice. I chose to put myself in a compromising position. That's about self-ownership. That's self-leadership. That's the principles of a reality-based life. You have to own your choices. And it's always a choice. It's a choice to stay in character. It's a choice to go outside your character. It's a choice to stay high. It's a choice to go low. But it's always a choice. What's up, Miles? How are you, honey? Um, so that's that's my message today, you guys. I know that there are... are I, I've seen it on my timeline. I had a phone call from a friend of mine today that kind of prompted this and I'm just like you know what let's have this grown up conversation about how people behave and the bigger thing isn't like I said it, it's not the behavior itself it's the it's the judgment the ability or inability to exercise good judgment and for me my reminder is to my power team we stay high stay high like don't allow someone to push your buttons to try and get a rise out of you because they're wanting emotion from you and you know full well if they're behaving badly against you they don't care for you and they don't deserve your emotions dismiss be gone non-factor <laughs> like it's really that simple but that hard at the same time because I do know 100 Sometimes people will send you to places where it takes some woosah moments to say, uh-uh, don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Don't do it. What they say in color purple, he ain't worth it. <laughs> he ain't worth it. <laughs> one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite lines in the movie, don't do what I did. He ain't worth it. Exactly. It's not worth it. Who you are, how you show up to the world, the character you've built, the person that you have become, and the even more improved version of you who are you are becoming is not worth compromising over someone who doesn't care for you in the first place. So that's the message. Have an amazing rest of your Sunday, and I will talk to you guys later on this week. Have a good one. Thanks, as always, for being part of the Ultimate Power Team and living life on Mars with me, guys. I'm out of here.